Uh, my topic is uh, keeping phosphorus on the land and out of waterways. And um, this is, uh, I'm going to share with you uh, results of a research that uh, we conducted with the long-term goal of keeping phosphorus on the land. Uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce some of the collaborators in this project. Uh, Geetani is a master student at the University of Manitoba. Josh Markham is a UW a summer undergraduate student. Don Flayton and Wally Akintami, they are both professors at the University of Manitoba who are collaborating on this project. So let me uh, first explain uh, why do we need to keep phosphorus on the land. Uh, we, keep, we need to keep phosphorus on the land because uh, phosphorus uh, is a nutrient essential for plant growth. So it has a beneficial role uh, on the land. However, if it gets into our water, water bodies, it poses a threat to our aquatic environment. And uh, if you look at the quantities, uh, we need about 0.2 parts per million of phosphorus in soil solution for optimum plant growth, whereas about one-tenth of that concentration in lake water would accelerate algal blooms. And this picture is a picture taken in 2006, it's Grand Beach and you can see algal blooms there. Now this is a huge challenge, we need to make sure that we have high enough phosphorus in the soil. Uh, so that we have enough food to eat. At the same time, we have to make sure that our concentration of phosphorus in water bodies is less than eutrophic concentration. So to do that, when we have to uh, keep our phosphorus concentration in soils high by applying fertilizers or manure, the only solution is for to find ways to minimize phosphorus loadings to water bodies. How can we do that? Well, first we have to identify situations where we believe that the risk of phosphorus losses would be high. And for each of these situations, we have to find how this phosphorus is moving from land to water. What mechanisms are responsible for the movement? And based on that knowledge, we have to develop best management practices for each situation. How would phosphorus move or what are the transport processes for phosphorus? Now phosphorus, uh, unlike most other uh, elements, uh, get attached to soil particles. The soil particles, particularly clay and silt particles, can hold on to phosphorus. And when those particles are moving with erosion, some of the phosphorus will be moving with the soil particles. So erosion of particulate P is one mechanism of phosphorus transport. Phosphorus can also get dissolved in runoff water and surface runoff is also one other mechanism of phosphorus moving to water bodies. Phosphorus tends to get leached and once it is leaching down the soil profile through subsurface flow, it can again enter the ground, the surface water bodies. And what, of, what processes dominate under Manitoba conditions? Now here, what we have is a somewhat flat landscape, uh, very, not very high intensity rainfall. The erosion is not a huge problem. So in Manitoba, in most uh, soils, the erosion of particulate plea P is negligible. However, surface runoff could be high, particularly in our clay soils, and uh, this is again true for uh, under snow melt conditions where a huge amounts of water uh, is lost from the land to water bodies. And in sandy soils, uh, substantial quantities could be lost uh, through leaching, and this is again especially true uh, in southern Manitoba where most of our soils are sandy. Another uh, situation that enhances phosphorus loss is flooding. And flooding is also a common occurrence in Manitoba, particularly during sp spring snow melt time, because the la landscape is flat and this, our soils are relatively impermeable. And this flooding could result in anoxic conditions, not much oxygen on the surface of the soils. And anoxic conditions due to flooding 
can enhance phosphorus release to overlying water. Now this has been shown in uh, various types of soils all over the world that phosphorus release could be even 10 times more under anoxic conditions. And this is basically because uh, uh, under anoxic conditions iron compounds get uh, reduced releasing phosphorus from iron uh, compounds. Now this however is an effect that varies from soil to soil, it does not happen in all types of soils and therefore we need to understand the differences within soils in releasing phosphorus under flooded conditions to develop best management practices that would suit that type of soils. So we did this study with the objective uh, to investigate the phosphorus release patterns from different soils uh, in Manitoba under flooded conditions. Uh, I am only going to go over with one of the studies that we conducted. This was a field study, a ponding, artificial ponding study conducted at Glenlee uh, on a heavy clay soils. We had three types of treatments here. We had a control treatment where we did not apply any amendments. We also had a fertilized treatment where mono ammonium phosphate was applied as a phosphorus fertilizer. And we had a manured treatment where we added a solid beef cattle manure. So we, we used wooden frames uh, as artificial ponds. And what we did was we excavated the first, uh, the surface soil, the first 20 centimeter of soil and installed the, the wooden uh, frames and then we had plastic lines, uh, plastic liners and we filled the soil back and then flooded the soil. Now before flooding the soil we installed uh, pore samplers uh, to collect uh, pore water leaching down the soil at different depths 5 centimeter and 10 centimeter depths. We collected surface uh, water samples as well as poor water samples twice a week uh, for 42 days. So we kept the soil flooded uh, for a period of 42 days and these water samples were analyzed for total dissolved phosphorus. We also took soil samples from outside and inside the ponds uh, and we measured various parameters in our soil samples as well. Now in all uh, soils, uh, the treatments we found within the first 10 days after flooding, the soil became anaerobic or anoxic. Uh, when we looked at the total dissolved phosphorus concentration with time, uh, this is in surface water, we found that in, in our plots where which were manured or fertilized, we had a high concentration of total dissolved phosphorus compared to the control treatment. However, we did not see a significant change in concentration except for these 28 to 32 days we had some certain fluctuation but other than that we did not find a significant decrease in phosphorus uh, or in significant decrease or increase in phosphorus concentration over time. Whereas with poor water again we found manured and fertilized treatment had higher concentration but the concentration slightly decreased over time. Now this is in contradiction to most other findings in other parts of the world where they observed about tenfold increase in phosphorus concentration with flooding. So we investigated this further, we looked at the concentrations of other ions like calcium, magnesium, iron, manganese, in all those ones we found somewhat increase about fivefold increase in concentrations of these ions in soil solution. We also looked at uh, the capacity of the soil to retain phosphorus or the ability of the soils uh, to hold on to phosphorus with flooding. Now here these purple, do they come as purple there? Yeah. The purple bars are the soils outside the pond uh, and the orange bars are for the, for the soils inside the pond which are reduced. Now what we found was this flooding and the reduction of the soil increased the, the capacity of the soil to hold on to phosphorus. So the, so the phosphorus is, the soil is not letting go of the phosphorus, it is holding on to the phosphorus and the phosphorus is not moving to the water. So in this study we found that flooding did not increase phosphorus release to flood water or poor water, however flooding increased the soil's capacity to retain phosphorus or hold on to phosphorus. Therefore, this heavy clay soil acted as a sink to retain phosphorus when flooded. It's like eating up the phosphorus, keeping it 
in this within the soil, not letting it go, so, which is a good thing because there is no risk uh, with flooding uh, in this particular soil that we that it could enhance uh, phosphorus loadings to water bodies. However, this may not be the case for all soils in Manitoba uh, that are prone to flooding. So. What next? We are conducting another laboratory study with more soils. We have 12 different soils from Manitoba in this study. So we are trying to see whether this release pattern is the same or is it different among uh, the different soils. And we may repeat this ponding study on another location, uh, obviously depending on the availability of funding as well as if depending on what we find from our laboratory incubation study. And this will help in designing drainage systems for different soils. So we really have no solution yet, but we are getting there. And finally, I would like to acknowledge uh, the Manitoba Water Stewardship Fund and the University of Winnipeg for funding the research and Anthony Buckley for technical support. And thank you very much.